India's electric grid is one of the largest electrical grid in the world. And today, if it is required to transfer power from one end of our country to another end, it is very much possible. And I'm not talking about just the power, but the bulk amount of power. Bulk amount of power can be transferred from Kashmir to Kanyakumari or any place in the country. And this has also ensured the power availability throughout the nation. This has become possible because of the One Nation, One Grid and One Frequency program. This program has also made India's electric grid as one of the largest electric grid in the world. Achieving this was not easy, of course not. But it was achieved and it is a very important and proud thing in India's electrical power sector. In this video, we are going to talk about what is One Nation, One Grid program and what are the advantages of the same. Let us understand One Nation, One Grid with simple example. Let's say we have three big water tanks supplying water to three cities, namely City A, City B and City C. For City A, the water tank is filled 130%. We'll consider each city needs 100% water. That means the tank of city A is filled 30% more than what the city needs. For city B, the tank is filled 90%. That means city B has 10% less water than what it needs. For city C, the tank is only filled 80%. City C has 20% less water than what the city needs. If you look at the situation, city B and city C has a deficiency of water, whereas city A has 30% more water than what the city needs. So what we can do here to satisfy the water needs of all the three cities? Well, what we can do is we can connect water tanks of all the three cities together and then manage the water supply. Now we can give 10% of water to city B and 20% of water to city C from city A's additional water quantity. In this way, we are satisfying the needs of all the three cities. And this is efficient use of available resources. This is called as management. By interconnecting water tanks of all the three cities, we manage to provide sufficient water to all the cities. Now, if you understood this simple example, you have understood the concept of One Nation and One Grid program. Let me just explain it to you for more clarity. Just like the situation of water in the different cities in our example, the electrical power was also not available throughout India in sufficient amount. Some regions were generating additional energy, but some region had shortfall of the power. So, in early 90s, it was conceptualized to connect different regions of India together so that we can have better management of the electrical power. Now, for planning and operational purposes, India is divided into five regions, namely Northern region, Northeastern region, Eastern region, Southern region and Western region. Initially, all the state grids were connected together to form one regional grid. So, electric grid of different states like Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Goa were connected together to form one western region grid. Similarly, all the state grids were connected together to form regional grids. Each region has its own connected electric grid. Now, what is an electric grid? We know that Power system consists of generation, transmission and distribution of electrical power. I also have a dedicated video on power system. If you want to watch that, link is provided in the description. So we can say power system generally extends from the power plant to the socket in our home. And a power system supplying power to a sizable region like a city or a state or even a complete country can be called as electric grid. So, each region is having its own connected grid. Within the region, power management was good, but this was not sufficient. Still, there were power deficiencies in some regions. One region was producing good amount of electrical power, but the other region was not. Let us have more clarity from one more example. 
Now the number that I'll be using in this example are purely for explanation purpose. Let's say North region's power requirement is 50 gigawatt and it is producing 57 gigawatt of power. So they have 7 gigawatt of additional power. East region needs 10 gigawatt of power and they are producing 15 gigawatt. So 5 gigawatt additional. West region needs 35 gigawatt of power but the production is only 30 gigawatt. There is a shortfall of 5 gigawatt energy. So what we can do is we can connect East region grid to West region and then balance the requirement of both because East region is having additional 5 gigawatt of energy. North East needs 5 gigawatt of energy but they are having only 3 gigawatt. So shortfall of 2 gigawatt. Here we can connect North region grid to North East and then balance out the requirements. For South requirement is let's say 40 gigawatt and the availability of power is only 35 gigawatt. So again shortfall of 5 gigawatt. So again we can connect North region grid to South region and balance out the requirements. So now we have sufficient power throughout the country. But this is not constant. There is a high possibility that power production or demand of power of any of the region can increase or decrease. In that case, balancing of power can get difficult with the current regional connection that you can see on your screen. So it makes very much sense that we connect all the five regions together and form one national grid. In that way, we can transfer power from one region to any other region in the country. And the same was conceptualized during early 90s. It was very much necessary and important to connect all these five regions together and form one national grid. So, Ministry of Power Government of India decided to connect all these regional grids together and have better management of the limited resources. But of course, this was not easy task. We are talking about connecting huge regions and transfer bulk amount of power. This was difficult for sure. And this was given, this task was given to one of the biggest electrical power transmission company, Power Grid. Power Grid transmit about 50% of total power generated in India. Power Grid owns more than 1,72,000 circuit kilometer of transmission lines and has more than 250 substations throughout the nation. In October 1991, Northeastern and Eastern grids were connected and the power exchange between Northeast and East region started. In March 2003, Western region and uh, Eastern and Northeastern regions were connected. These three regions now started exchanging the power. In August 2006, North and Eastern grids were interconnected, thereby four regional grids, Northern, Eastern, Western and Northeastern grids are synchronously connected forming one central grid operating at one frequency. Now on 31st December 2013, Southern region was connected to the central grid in synchronous mode with commissioning of 765 kV Raichur Solapur transmission line thereby achieving one nation, one grid and one frequency. Now if any region is having power deficiency, power can be easily transmitted to that particular region from regions having additional power. Power can be transmitted anywhere in the country since all the regions are now interconnected. Today, we have one of the largest electric grid in the world running on one frequency of 50 Hz. And as on December 2021, India's inter-regional power transfer capacity is more than 1,12,000 MW. That means we can actually transfer 1,12,000 MW of power anywhere in the country. You can consider this national grid as a highway for electrical power. With the help of this highway, we can deliver electrical power to any part of the country. This One Nation One Grid program has largely benefited us. We can now have better management of power demand, which also ensures stability of the grid. Power now can be made available easily, which is supposed to have lower tariffs. 
power generated through renewable sources can be easily integrated with the central grid. Not only this, but India's national grid is also connected to the neighboring countries like Bangladesh, Bhutan and Nepal. This has enabled power exchange between India and neighboring countries. All this has become possible because of one nation, one grid program. But of course, everything comes with advantages and some disadvantages. What could be the possible disadvantage of one nation, one grid program? If something is coming into your mind, do let us know uh, in the comment section below. So I hope this video has helped you in understanding about the one nation, one grid program. If it did, there is a like button given in the bottom section and you can actually use it. And definitely do share this video with the people you think will be benefited from the video. And subscribe if you are interested in learning electrical engineering in easiest way. So that's all for this video guys. I'll see you in the next one. But till then, keep watching, keep learning.